Getting started with coding can be really difficult. There are so many courses, books, articles, professors, tech YouTubers. Tips to pass your technical interview. Really cool because one tip for all you new grads out there. Planning is for Okay, so you clearly don't need to watch that YouTube channel. There's nothing over there for you. And they all claim to teach you how to code in 30 days or get a software engineering job quickly, which is impossible, by the way. Sorry to burst your bubble. But with all of these resources out there, how do you know which one to choose? How do you know which courses are legit and which ones are BS? But it doesn't have to be that hard. There are a few habits that you can learn that will help you become a better programmer. It's all about your ability to focus on what you can challenge yourself to learn more than you knew yesterday. That's pretty much it. So let's get into it. The first thing I changed to make coding easier was focusing on one thing at a time. Now, I know that's easier said than done, but the old me didn't get the memo the first time around. I would always get really excited about deciding to start to code, but would get immediately overwhelmed anytime I tried to begin. I would search for courses on Pluralsight, Udemy, and Coursera, which by the way, there are hundreds of courses Courses out there between just these three platforms. How the heck do you know which one to even choose? Well, I would tell the old Pooja to just choose one. Choose anything, in fact. At that stage in your programming journey, it's better to just pick a mediocre class and just get started. Get comfortable with hearing words such as classes, objects, variables, and functions. It's like listening to Mozart when you're a child. You're not really actively learning anything, but if you're things enough time in your peripheral, you may start to pick up on these things. Likewise, if you're not one for taking courses, I would do some Googling. Literally type in how to start coding. Skip any YouTube channels that come up because you're already watching this one, obviously, and then skim through any articles. They'll most likely pick a language and framework, tell you to download an IDE, Java, some libraries, and then get started with the coding process. You can do that, but I'd honestly even search online IDE or IDE in browser, which allows you to start writing print statements in basic arithmetic and code online. The point is pick something anything and stick to that one thing. If that one thing is not a course, which I highly recommend starting with a course, you can even check out Harvard's CS50. Then create a goal for yourself based on the articles you see online. Today I'll learn about data types and only focus on that. Don't allow yourself to go down a rabbit hole. It's good to allow yourself to organically follow your curiosity, but you should also be disciplined about learning things in depth. All right, so the next thing is finish. That's it. That's your next piece of great advice. That's not even a real sentence. What I meant was, don't leave things halfway done, or in other words, half-assing your studying projects and readings. Try to finish everything that you start regardless of how long it takes. It doesn't really matter what it is, but being relentless in software engineering is an extremely desired trait. When half your pipelines are failing and you're getting tons of on-call incidents, you need to be able to stay calm in a high-pressure environment and do a bit of detective work to figure out the root cause of the problem. Don't be like the old puja and panic under pressure. This leads to unfinished findings and forgotten projects. If you want to show employers that you're really good at what you do, just prove to them that you'll uphold your end of the bargain with finishing what you start. Build that habit now, and trust me, it'll be pretty annoying as a process at first. You may spend an entire day fixing an import statement or an entire week trying to figure out why your damn code isn't working. Those pesky syntax errors are everywhere, but it is so worth it. Next tip is embrace failure. This one may be self-explanatory, but there will be days where you mess up. You may watch a tutorial on binary search trees and then try to traverse one the next day. Your code won't work, you'll keep getting index out of bound errors, and your patience will run thin. The worst thing you can do is to give up. It's okay to fail, most people do, and to be honest, it builds character. This will help you be a better coder because there are times where you'll spend hours on a leak code problem, pour your heart and soul into trying to find all the islands in a 2D matrix, your code runs with the scenarios you've provided, but when you go to submit it, it doesn't actually pass all the test cases. On top of that, you have no idea why. You try debugging, you try adding print statements, and you're not able to figure it out. Now, this doesn't mean that you don't finish the problem as I said in the previous tip, remember that one? But it's also okay to accept defeat and ask for help or search for the correct answer. It's okay to use other resources to figure out the problem. Failure isn't an adjective, it's a verb. Uh, at least I think it's a verb. Failure doesn't define you. It's an experience that happened to you. It's an action and all actions can be iterated on and changed over time. Don't ruminate on your mistakes, learn from them and try to get better. After all, we are adaptable as a species and the most successful programmers are those that can learn and adapt to overcome friction. The fourth tip is to actually learn the theory behind what you're doing. I know, I know, this is an unpopular opinion. Theory is so boring. I'd rather just get started coding. I know, just chill. But if we've learned anything from Dr. Strange, when you're a world-class neurosurgeon who breaks her hand and stumbles across an ancient realm that's able to heal people with their mind, if you wanna be a great sorcerer, learn the theory before you practice. Wait, wait, I, 
I don't think that's the clip that I wanted to show. If you don't have the fundamentals down, you won't understand what you're doing. You won't understand that reassigning strings doesn't delete the old string in memory, it just adds another variable to the stack. You won't understand that recursing a sorted list is faster than iterating over a sorted list. And you won't know why the heck we use load balancers to even out the number of requests that go to each instance in a cluster. Coding is really powerful. It manipulates the literal hardware in your computer, so you need to be able to wield that power by hitting yourself with some knowledge. And the last tip is to code. I know, that's kind of a cop-out tip, but you don't need to understand everything perfectly before starting to code. You definitely need to understand things well before moving on to the next topic. This goes hand in hand with all the previous tips. Choose one thing to focus on, finish that one thing, embrace micro failures, and learn the theory behind it. But while you're doing all those things, you need to actually be coding. Take the time to actually sit down, write a for loop, give yourself a pat on the back, create a non-primitive type and populate it with data, create a class and add methods, local variables, and instances of this object, run your code, test your functions, create an interface, create an abstract class, import a test library, break things, and start all over again. You can't really learn how to code without actually doing the thing. That'd be like reading about plastic surgery and then attempting it yourself on a real human without any practice. Although I'm not sure how well practicing and failure will be accepted in the plastic surgery business. And although the consequences for not practicing coding are a little less impactful than cutting open a human, try to make a point of practicing every single day. If you're at a coffee shop, on a walk, chilling on the couch, on a train or a bus or a plane, code. Live, laugh, love, code. Totally exaggerating at this point. I'm honestly just having a lot of fun with this video. If you follow these tips, coding will start to become easier and easier every single day. You don't necessarily need raw talent. You need to develop traits that help you overcome difficulties and build curiosity. As with anything that relies heavily on the problem solving process of your brain, it's like a muscle that needs to be trained. On day one, you may need to do a few reps with a five pound weight. And the next day, maybe even less reps because you're sore from the previous day. Regardless of feeling sore, you still show up. You still try to be better than you were yesterday. Day. And eventually you'll end up doing 25 reps with 50 pound weights. I, I don't really know weight, so we'll, hopefully that's a good, good rep count. Likewise, if you show up every day, you're consistent and relentless and you truly want to learn and are curious about how things work, you'll learn to code faster than everyone else. You'll truly be able to prove to yourself how capable you are. So go start coding. Peace out.